who had chinis on both sides of the family. And we don't even live in West Virginia. <laughs> but <laughs> you can say those things when you're not running for re-election. Unresolved Problem segment tonight, as you may know, we donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to help the poor, not only in America, but all around the world, especially children. And you help us do that by buying stuff on BillOReilly.com. But there is a reason why some areas remain poor generation after generation despite massive assistance. Tonight on ABC, Diane Sawyer has a special entitled, A Hidden America, Children of the Mountains. And I spoke to her about it yesterday. Your show's a child, Children of the Mountains, okay? But there are Rocky Mountains, they're not poor there. Uh, there are Sierras, they're not poor there. And I submit to you that the culture in Appalachia harms the children almost beyond repair. And I did some volunteer work in Berea, Kentucky. I know the area pretty well. There's really nothing we can do about it. Am I wrong? You're wrong. The great opportunity is the information economy. If you take these kids, and that's really what we're seeing here in this documentary, as somebody said, you know, these kids are as smart as the kids in India. Sure. These kids are as smart as the kids in Mexico. But their parents are screwed you up. Take them. Well, again. You know, that's the thing. When I was doing the volunteer work, kids get married at 16 and 17. Their parents are drunks. I'm generalizing now. There's a lot of meth. There's a lot of irresponsibility. There's fear to go. Look, if I'm born in Appalachia, the first chance I get, I go to Miami. Okay, because that's where the jobs are. But they stay there. And the cycle of poverty for 200 years, boom, 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 boom. And I don't want to sound hopeless about it, but I think it is hopeless. I don't think the there, government can do anything about it. There are statistics that will tell you that it has a higher prescription drug abuse rate than twice as high as all Miami. All poor areas do that. As New York. Not all poor areas. There's no question about it. That, And as we know, the company that manufactured OxyContin moved in there, ended up paying a fine for what they said to people about the addictiveness of the sure. drug there. So yeah, they've been trapped in a lot of cycles. We're talking about this other generation. Aren't that you sees from it. Kentucky? I'm from Kentucky. You're con but well, look. I am from Kentucky. That's right. I am my, my But if you grow up and you see this, you get the heck out of there. You don't stay there. And that's the problem. You know, I don't want to rebuild the infrastructure of Appalachia. I want to leave it pristine. It's beautiful. To preserve that culture, to give them a foothold in an information economy, let's just say. Give take, them? What am I supposed to give them? Let's just say, I'm not talking about government. I'm talking about moving in with computers in these homes. Who, right now, who, who's going to move in? Who's going to give them the There computers? are lots of organizations out there that have lots of computers and lots of mentoring so you're, support. You're calling for private people to donate things in this area to help these people. And I'm calling for people not to forget these kids. Because right, I'm with you there. And that's agent. why I donated my time. But I I gotta tell you, people have to help themselves, you know? They have to wise up and they have to see that there's a culture of poverty there, a culture of ignorance there. And you either leave or you try to improve it any way you can. But you but have lots of fighters in there who are trying. You, you, these are not all the people. However, it's mixed in the generation. This group of kids wants it. All right, well, Americans should pull together and I'm with you and we will watch Children of the Mountains. Thanks for coming in. West Virginia beat Clemson in the Orange Bowl last night by a score of 70 to 33. West Virginia scored 70 points? Huh? Yeah. West Virginia? They don't score that high in their SATs. That's unbelievable. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. West Virginia is a place founded on freedom. Oh my God. <laughs> For me and my friends, what's up? That means the freedom to do whatever the f we want. Oh my God, money you face, baby. Who been with me? One way in, one way in. No, no way around. Stay the f out. Our motto around here is whatever happens, happens. We all grew up here together. We're just like family. Oh, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> People say we've got big personalities, but we've got even bigger hearts. Big <laughs> wolf and both days. Y'all want to swim in pool? We're young, oh my God. free, Woo! and buck wild. Thanks for 
here. I hope it tastes as good as y'all look. Oh. Premieres Thursday, January the 3rd at 10 on MTV. Can you tell me about the reputation of the White family in Boone County and West Virginia? I'd really rather not comment on that. When you represent the whites, you don't know what you're going to get into. Shootings, armed robbery, embezzlement, forgery, drug cases, burglary, fights, things like that. I've been joy killing people, cutting them up, shooting them. I can't stop killing you. I chop a simple bitch up and throw him in a damn mine shaft up in a garbage bag. I got three mine shafts up his house. Well, I used to be water in the back. I used to try a little coke here and there. I smoked a little crack. Right here, listen. You want to hear the Boone County mating call? So good, baby. I'm like, if you started some with me, it would be, I'd like, I'd fight you. It was one hell of a night. I just went on a rampage, pretty much. I said, Brandon, what are you going to do, shoot me? It's just strange how everything had happened in our family. It seems like our lives has just been a party, and we're just living like as a story. At your funeral, what do you want people to do? Rock and roll, baby. Even though they might be the most hated family, well, they're probably the most free. They are the true rebels of the South. Hey, you all right? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I just found this tied to a tree back there. Somebody did this. Find my phone. We do have it at the diner. If we go back now, we're gonna miss the show. This town used to be a train hub years ago. <laughs> it was a nice place to live. Before the big wreck. After that, there wasn't much to it. There wasn't much sense in sticking around, you know. The jobs left. Folks soon followed. People that stayed, they mostly just keep to themselves. Hello? What about the clowns? The clowns? Clowns are like a... Like a pack of dogs. Ghosts. Out in this town for years. Hello, my name is Regina Fairchild. I am chairwoman of the Friends of Coal Ladies Auxiliary. In July of 2007, I invited 60 women into my home to discuss promoting coal and its benefits to our state and nation. 
and now we are over 10,000 strong. Through community service and education, we are able to provide the following programs. Coping the Classroom has now been in operation for three years. The purpose of this is to educate children the importance of coal. We start out with the history of how it's formed in the earth. Then we show them about mountaintop removal. We show them underground. We show them preparation plant. We show the different shippings of coal, electricity. And then they get to go through the mine and see everything that they have been presented over the six weeks. It's very important for our nation to realize how important coal is. And with our program of Coal in the Classroom, we feel that we are fulfilling that one dream that we wanted to present to the children in West Virginia. In order to prepare these students for our classroom, we have invited special speakers who are members, representatives of the Coal Association and the mining industry. These speakers devised their own presentation methods by using DVDs, hands-on experiences, and question and answer sessions. This is what we are trying to get the kids to understand about coal. We have planted the seed of understanding in our third and fourth grade students in hopes that when they grow and mature, they will realize the importance of coal not only to themselves, their family and friends, but also to the state of West Virginia. My grandson Dominic Giles was so excited when he came home from school and said the Friends of Coal Women's Auxiliary had been to his school and uh, he was just so excited telling us all about coal mining and, and what types of coal and how it's mined and what it's used for and they, they just did a wonderful job with the kids at the school and now he can come home and, and talk things over with his granddad who is a superintendent of coal mines and uh, know a little bit more what, what his grandpa's working at and what he does for a living. And um, he's just been really excited about the whole trip, the whole field trip and everything that the Ladies Auxiliary has done for the school. We were trying to think of some community service that we could do. And we found this uh, cartoon coloring book. And we looked at that and we said this would be a great idea to take to the classrooms. First week we did a little explanation about coal, the history of coal and then we had guest speakers come in after that. So each week we had a different speaker. One was on surface mining, one was on underground mining, electricity, and then the final one was uh, Bill Rainey, who is president of the West Virginia Coal Association, came in and spoke with the kids. And we also had uh, Jeremy Starks, who is a professional bass fisherman, came in and also talked about the environment. And today we are sending the kids to the exhibition mine and hopefully they'll remember a lot that they, they learned in the classroom. By educating children, they are ready for the future, as well as the knowledge that they are gaining, they can take home and educate their parents. This is with the Friends of Coal Juniors, and our purpose is to educate the youth of the community on the use of coal, and we go into the classrooms, and, and it does help you with your community service that you need when you graduate from high school, and we will give community service points for that. So we invite everyone between ages of 13 and 18 to join us. Friends of Coal Juniors is an organization that was set up by the Friends of Coal Ladies Auxiliary two years ago. Since our start, we have taken part in such activities as the Friends of Coal Auto Fair in July, Tailgate Halloween in October, and the Beckley Christmas Parade every December. Our main goal in the Friends of Coal Junior is to provide information for those teens 13 to 19 to come into our organization to help us promote coal in a mountain state. I am a volunteer with the Friends of Coal Ladies Auxiliary. We began the Giving Hearts program three years ago. We started with providing Christmas to our local families who are in need and our service men and women. Each year we try to provide Christmas for approximately 200 people in our area. This Christmas includes clothing, toys for the children, and we try to provide all the toys that the, child, that the children ask for, and we also provide a complete Christmas meal. 
Christmas for these needy families is made possible with your donation. After Christmas, we began the coal closet. Around January, February, there was a lot of house fires and people lost, families had lost everything that they had worked years for. We started with the coal closet to, for people to be able to bring wearable clothing that they're no longer, they no longer need, uh, re appliances, refrigerator stoves, any type of furniture, beds, end tables, lamps. And with this coal closet, when there is a, a tragedy in our community, we are able to help our families who are in need. Another form of community service that the ladies have is a stuffed dog that they have named Mr. Cole. He is soft and cuddly and we distribute those several times a year to the local nursing homes, to the patients, and to the local daycare centers. The only thing in return is hopefully a hug and a smile. We have a playground for the children. We have an underground mock mine that uh, kids can go through at any age. Uh, they'll receive a hard hat to go through the mine and take a look at the mine. Uh, we have face painting. We have a balloon bust. It's a contest that the kids can do. We have sumo wrestlers. We have a rock wall. Uh, we have tattoos. We have so many things for so many ages. Ladies Auxiliary here in Beckley has been absolutely fabulous to bring a wide, wide dimension of attention to the importance of coal, not only to West Virginia, but to America, to our youth, as well as to our elderly. And they are bringing the message like no one else can deliver it. Uh, it's much more effective for the ladies who are so knowledgeable about the industry and so sensitive about it and have a passion for it to tell the story as opposed to those of us who just simply work in the industry. They have found that. And I encourage anyone that has an interest, has a, uh, any kind of relative that has anything to do with coal, electricity, transportation, to join in with the ladies. Call Ms. Fairchild and call one of the ladies in the auxiliary and get involved so that our youth understand how important coal is not only to our heritage and our history, but how it is a key to the future here for the state of West Virginia. There's one team in West Virginia that truly lights up the scoreboard. Support West Virginia coal miners. Coal keeps the lights on. Become a friend of coal today. This is more than a license plate. This is a badge of honor. The new Friends of Coal license plate. Apply for yours today at friendsofcoal.org. Support West Virginia coal miners. Coal keeps the lights on. Become a friend of coal today. Friends of Coal. This organization keeps state residents aware of their heritage and it even hosts a football game every year. The whole effort is to bring increased awareness to the significance of coal and particularly eastern coal. But the fact is that America has more coal than any other country in the world. It's people that not only are involved in the coal industry, but it's those that understand the significance of the coal industry. Regulations have hobbled mining in the state, and Friends of Coal wants to fight back. We say that EPA is coming by land, and they're coming by sea, and they're coming by air. What they're doing to the electric generating industry it's just devastating, and I think it, it absolutely impedes and jeopardizes the national grid because of, of the emphasis on trying to do away with coal as a primary fuel to generate electricity. This country was built on the use of coal. One mining regulation we've seen in recent years is on mercury emissions. It seems like a small problem in mining and mercury emissions are natural in our atmosphere. Yet mines are shutting down in the mountain state due to this. The absurdity of that whole thing is that the majority of mercury is controlled and there's just a minuscule amount that they're, they're directing this to. 
you know, air emissions have improved by about 70% over the last 30 years while coal use has tripled. We're clearly, clearly headed in the right way. They established an implementation of this new proposed rule six years in advance of what the original dates were. They've created an impossible compliance schedule. Overall, the state economy could use a jolt from coal mining. The rest of the world is wanting our coal. They're wanting to put a light bulb in every house in China, in every house in India. And they're using coal as the, as the fuel to do that because it's so reliable, it's dependable, and it's low cost. And why we as a country are not promoting that with the insistence that we get better every day befuddles me. We also noticed that Friends of Coal had posted a video on its website that we had a little something to do with. If I wanted America to fail. We thought it was very, very direct and uh, succinct and, and completely understandable in very simple language as to the things that every American is confronting. Reporting from Washington, Frank McCaffrey.